ready. Bocce Burgers and Brews in Livermore. Homey Greek Tavern Fair in Alameda. And an old school pizzeria in San Bruno. That's the spiciest thing I've ever eaten in my life. Just ahead on Check Please Bay Area. Knocked it out of the park. We didn't really want to stop eating them. Cream. Hi, I'm Leslie Sabraco. Welcome to Check Please Bay Area, the show where regular Bay Area residents review and talk about their favorite restaurants. Now we have three guests and each one recommends one of their favorite spots and the other two go check them out to see what they think. Joining me at the Check Please table today are clinical psychologist, Lindsay Ulrey, retiree and avid bowler, Paula Johnson, and senior account manager, Kevin Garcia. Welcome everyone. Thank you. Right. Yes. Right. Up first, Lindsay's pick. From giant Jenga and cornhole to axe throwing and bocce ball, her restaurant takes family game night to a whole new level. Offering casual bites and a lively atmosphere in the heart of Livermore's wine country, it's debauchery. You know, being here in the building at Debauchery, it's just, it, it's a vibe. It really is. It's, you walk in and you just know you're gonna have a good time. This place is great for lots of different types of groups. It's great because at a normal dinner or sit down where people would go out, you might have to have an icebreaker or something like that. Whereas here, it's already built in. And you just start throwing bocce balls grab a beer, and things are, are already moving. Ready. <laughs> Before I had worked here, I had never thrown an ax, never thought of throwing an ax. In the ax cage, there's always gonna be a coach that will stand with you to make sure, one, that everything is safe, but then two, that you're actually getting to stick. You know, take a step forward, take a step back, straighten out, loosen up. It's really satisfying when you get the ax to twirl a few times and then stick in the wood. <laughs> Money. I like to describe our menu as an elevated American cuisine. We have beef sliders, but they're made with Wagyu beef. We have a boozy chili cheese nacho, so there's beer in the cheese, and, and we make the chili in-house. So we are in the middle of wine country. We try to feature local wineries, and our beer rotation is the rotating tap. Each of our spaces have that table or that lounge style area, so easy for starters and snacks. And there are still guests who get full entrees and it still works. <laughs> so it's fun to see people really be themselves and really have fun. Get to hear a lot of belly laughs. Get to hear a lot of people screaming at the top of their lungs because they're so happy. To I think that's what people like. They like that variety and that option to kind of almost like that choose your own adventure. It's a fun environment to be in for sure. It's really rewarding every day. Okay, Lindsay, this is really a fantastic place for families, right? Oh, yes, because there's just something for everyone there. We had so many delicious dishes, and we're like, this is amazing. What are some of the favorites? So we always get the Have a Cow Burger, which is a juicy patty with these slow caramelized onions that are sweet and savory. And then if you don't like red meat, you could do the Beyond Burger with all the same fixins. And I feel like there's something for everyone. So, Kevin, what, what was debauchery like for you? Was it debaucherous? <laughs> you, you, you know, know I had to say that. Yeah, 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 I suddenly had to say that. You couldn't help me. Yeah, 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 just waiting for it. The first thing we noticed upon walking in was just so much space. The giant Connect Four, they had the board games, the huge arcade, uh, really fun names on the menu. So just reading the menu itself was just, it gets you ready to just have a great time there for the night. So right. my wife had to flank the tank. And I got to say, I was a little jealous because mm. the flavoring of the caramelized onions and the horseradish mustard was spectacular. I had the have a cow burger. The burger was also very good as well. Love the steak fries that they had with it. I will say I was so hungry when I had it, I just started eating it right away. Right. And when I probably got about a quarter of the way to the end, I didn't finish it, unfortunately. It was a little undercooked, so I had to stop eating it. But I mean, it was still flavorful. The burger, I tried it. It was beautiful, mm -hmm. but it came almost like tartar. 
Mm -hmm. Oh, not for you. I normally don't like yeah. to send food back, mm -hmm. yes, but this yeah. is wonderful <laughs> beef. It's yeah. wagyu. Yeah. yeah. So I did send it back. Wow, okay. And I said, if you could just make it medium for me. But you know what impressed me was their French fries. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So golden in mm -hmm. color. Yeah. And I love that they tested it with sea salt. Mm -hmm. yeah. Primo. Right. Excellent. Right. So we always like to get the big pretzel that is just so delicious. That's a fun one to start off with because you're just like dipping it in the cheese sauce and like a spicy mustard and all the different flavors are so fun. And is there anything else? Yes. Yeah. So the bagogi tacos are incredible. It's a Korean style marinated steak that is just so tender and juicy. And then there's a chipotle crema that just adds this nice creamy cool layer. Cilantro, pickled jalapenos, and it's just all of this heat but not too hot. And this flour tortilla, oh, they're just delicious. Mm -hmm. We tried the uh, the shrimp wontons, the appetizer. Mm -hmm. Loved it, uh, nice and crispy. The Thai chili sauce, I believe, was the dipping sauce we have. Great way to start off. Mm -hmm. Loved it, yeah, we had that, and I don't know if I can mention desserts yet <laughs> later. Oh. <laughs> okay, I had the creme brulee cheesecake. That, and, oh. uh, mm -hmm. <laughs> the caramel sauce, loved it, the, the powdered sugar, everything about it. I, mean, I have a major sweet tooth, and I could be a little picky when it comes to desserts, mm -hmm. uh, but the cheesecake there, I'd say, was definitely the highlight. Paula's so, shaking her head, yes, that was the favorite. We all of the desserts. Mm -hmm. The Sunday <laughs> was superb. Oh, yeah. The yeah. ice cream was just so creamy. That's my son's favorite, the Sunday. Oh, and mm -hmm. the caramel and the chocolate. I enjoyed it. Yeah. But the creme brulee cheesecake. Yeah. yeah. Creamy, moist. Mm -hmm. The berry tort was superb. It had a mixture of berries. And my son ordered a scoop of ice cream. Their vanilla bean ice cream was excellent. Yeah. I'm not a big strawberry person, but I did take my finger and lick that. <laughs> <laughs> that it was deal. excellent. They don't leave a trace. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. no crumb left. Not right. <laughs> so desserts are the star here. Absolutely. Yeah, and what do you get to drink? Yeah. yeah. So there's a cocktail called the Hippie Juice mm -hmm. that is not only beautiful, but it also is this perfect combination of it's not too sweet, has a little bit of like a lavender aromatic and oh so refreshing we had some sparkling wine mm. unfortunately it was a little flat mm. but their beer selection on tap was superb mm -hmm. i like a wheat beer so mm -hmm. oh, i had a hefeweizen and yeah. the wheat creamy mm. beautiful head awesome mm -hmm. you know the funny thing is too is when my wife and i were driving there as we're going down the road I immediately thought, wait, this seems really familiar where we're at here. And once we got to the corner, I realized we got married right across the street from where debauchery was at there. So kind of nice to revisit that area there. So yeah. it's great, great location too. Yeah. yeah. If you would like to try debauchery, it's located on East Vineyard Avenue in Livermore. The average tab per person without drinks is around $20. And advanced reservations are recommended for activities. Perfect. Kevin's Nostalgic Pick claims to be one of the oldest continuously family-owned pizzerias in America. He's been going there since he was a kid, and even though he lives way across the bay, every time he's on the peninsula, he makes a special pit stop in San Bruno at Toto's Pizzeria and Restaurant. The name Toto's comes from my grandfather, whose nickname was Toto. My grandfather opened up his first restaurant in 1926 in Coney Island, New York. And in 1945, my grandmother and grandfather decided to take a vacation to San Francisco and decided to stay here because it reminded them of Naples, all the hills. And there was very few, if any, pizzerias in San Francisco. We were the first pizzeria to start delivering in the early 50s. And then back in the 60s, I got to make pizzas when I was about six or seven years old. <laughs> that was fun. There is not really a secret to our pizza dough recipe, except for the fact that our flour is made special formula for us and hasn't changed since the days my grandfather was making it. 
In the early 70s, my dad and I had an idea to open a faster paced service, and that's our San Bruno location where we're at today. And we've been here almost 50 years. It's wonderful to have families in here who are second and third generation. We've seen them grow. We've seen kids come in here now with their children and their families. It's pretty special. We really hope that people take away the experience of family owned and operated business and the family atmosphere with authentic Neapolitan food. This is the best pizza ever. All right, Kevin, you've been going since you were a kid. This yeah. place has a really rich history. It does, yeah. It actually, mm -hmm. my parents used to go there when they were kids, when they were growing up in the 60s and 50s, back at the old uh, Mission Street location in San Francisco. It's pretty much everybody in my family has a, a special place in their heart for Toto's Pizza. Mm -hmm. And is there a pie that it holds a special place, or is it a range of pies? It's a range, but I got to say, every time I go, I always just get their simple mozzarella cheese pizza and mm -hmm. add salami and sauces to it. Very simple, basic. The ingredients are just very high quality. Mm -hmm. The flavor of the sauce and the texture of the crusts, it, it knocks out every single time I go. Mm -hmm. I'd say one item that seems to be underrated is the ravioli. Okay. Uh, mm -hmm. you know, if you really want to carve it up, besides the pizza, <laughs> ravioli, you can't go wrong with that. It's nice, thick ravioli that I like. The sauce is plenty flavorful. If you're not a meat eater, they also have the cheese ravioli. Mm -hmm. uh, they also have their house salad as well, too. You know, get the pepperoncinis with it, mm -hmm. um, you know, the olives in it. So All right, it's some very... pro tips there, pepperoncinis yeah. and olives. <laughs> pepperoncinis and olives, yes, <laughs> that's right. I ordered a Caesar salad. Yeah. The croutons tasted like it had just been baked and oh, cooked yeah. that morning. Oh, yeah. The dressing was so creamy, and the lettuce was just so fresh and crunchy. Right. And I ordered the pizza with the mozzarella, and I did add salami <laughs> and sausage. Yeah. All right. I was impressed. I didn't realize they did everything right in front of you. Yeah, you see He's, the guys right there as you walk right. in? When he sliced the mozzarella, and I'm going, oh my gosh, look <laughs> how <laughs> creamy <laughs> and fresh. It's like the dealing cards. I know, with, with the, the mushrooms. mushrooms. Yeah, yeah, yeah we're it like, It was mm -hmm. excellent. And my goddaughter, she goes, oh my gosh. And we did order another one to go. Oh yeah, that's oh, the way to do it. That's the key. Yes. All right, that's the key. Well, yes. Lindsay, what was your experience? Oh, so much fun. We did the meatball sliders. Oh yeah. Oh my goodness, these meatballs were super delicious. The only thing that we both agreed on was that there wasn't enough sauce on the meatballs, mm. but don't worry, we did order the lasagna. Oh. Gosh, this lasagna was like, I'm in some grandmother's like kitchen in, a, in <laughs> Italy and just you could like taste the love and there was lots of sauce. Yeah. So we did. We took the sauce from ah. the lasagna. Yeah. There you put go. it on the meatball sliders and we're like get creative with it. That's right. No shortage of cheese on those too. Yeah. Okay. There was so much cheese and it was so flavorful. Mm -hmm. We didn't really want to stop eating that lasagna. <laughs> Are there any other pies that you order? You know, yes. I will say the Toto's number two, mm -hmm. which is the uh, sausage and salami so with funny. mushrooms. I and read that. Oh. Yeah, <laughs> definitely. Mm -hmm. yeah. And my wife had the uh, Toto Zella pizza number five, which is their combination. You know, it has the peppers, mm -hmm. olives, mm -hmm. onions mm -hmm. on it. Mm -hmm. Classic combination pizza. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So we did pesto, fresh garlic, yeah. fresh tomatoes, and mm -hmm. basil. We kind of did our own thing. Yeah. And right. we got a small but we had so many yes. leftovers. Yeah. We were like, we only can have two slices each of the small <laughs> pizza. And did you have room for dessert? So we tried the cannoli and it was absolutely delicious. And it was crunchy on the outside and kind of creamy on the inside, but I only could have one bite because <laughs> we had had so many goodies before. And what about desserts on this one, Paula? Do you know, we didn't do desserts. What? <laughs> well, the only reason we didn't, our Caesar salad was so large. I couldn't do dessert. I'm sorry, <laughs> but I enjoyed what I had, the Caesar and the pot we had. It was great. So it sounds like you'd go back. Yes.
so we sat outside and it was actually oh, yeah. helpful for me in my wheelchair because we could the parking was super easy and then we just rolled up and there was that outdoor seating yeah. that has a little lights and I just rolled right up mm -hmm. and we it was just lovely yeah, definitely and, and the funny thing is before living in Oakland I lived in Daly City and I made a point to keep my dentist in Daly City because it gives me a good reason to go back and make a stop at Toto's when I cross the bridge. Yes. And I make sure to stop at Toto's That's to get right. a pie yeah. to bring back home with me to Oakland. Yes. So. Yeah. All right. If you would like to try Toto's Pizzeria and Restaurant, it's located on El Camino Real in San Bruno. And the average tab per person without drinks is around $20. From LA to Vegas, Paula's life on the road as a competitive bowler has exposed her to a huge variety of dining experiences. But of all those restaurants, the one that consistently hits a strike is a cozy Greek spot that has become her tried and true go-to. Located in the heart of Alameda, it's the Park Street Tavern. My name is Chris Frangoulis. And I'm his brother, Alex Frangoulis. And together we own the Park Street Tavern in Alameda. Growing up in a traditional Greek home, Alex and I grew up taking care of people, and food was like a third language. You knew that if you're coming over, you weren't gonna leave hungry for one of our parties. Our father came in 63, and his first job here was in Alameda, working at a local diner before he opened up his restaurant in 75. The menu here at the Park Street Tavern is definitely a mix of Greek and Italian food, and it kind of has that North Beach old school continental cuisine feel to it. We take pride in doing everything from scratch. It is comfort food, it fills you up and makes you feel good. It's a family place, so when people come in, it's uh, very easy to become part of the family, and the bar is very welcoming. We do have a very extensive wine list from all over the world, and we have a full bar back here, so we're always happy to make uh, any cocktail that you'd want. It's a healthy experience to dine out and bond with other people, get out, laugh, enjoy yourself, have good food, good drinks. It feeds the soul. Yeah, the bar's the modern campfire. Yeah. All right, Paula, before we talk about food, you know I'm gonna have to ask you about competitive bowling. I love bowling because of the camaraderie and mm -hmm. the people that you meet from all over the country. Mm -hmm. I bowl in senior tournaments and we have fun and we love shooting kamikazes. Ah! <laughs> so can I join your league? You may. Yeah, right? oh, yeah. you may. Not a senior, but no, you no. No, but <laughs> All right, now that we've gotten bowling out of the way, we've got to talk food. I like to call it my house. Oh, really? When I walk into that restaurant, I'm kind of known as the mayor of the restaurant. Oh, wow. Yeah, the ambiance, the welcome. It's family owned and they treat you as if you were family. Mm -hmm. And the food, oh my gosh. <laughs> my starter is the pancetta prawns, mm. which are very beautiful prawns, and it's wrapped in prosciutto. Mm -hmm. But they make this wonderful Greek butter sauce that it sits on. Mm -hmm. That's my start. Yeah. Yeah. The food from start to finish was just fantastic. Even just the bread and butter. I would have been content <laughs> sitting there just having bread and butter all night, but you know, I was there to have more than that. <laughs> so we had the calamari to start. It's delicious, mm. you know, perfectly fried. They had the nice additives of the sliced onions included with that as well too. Mm. And uh, I had the, the beef short rib. Yes. And which was mm. incredibly tender, very flavorful. The garlic mashed potatoes mm. and the spinach on the side, everything just was perfectly placed with it and tasted complimentary with the short rib. It was mm -hmm. great. So I loved how it was Greek and Italian. Mm -hmm. So you don't have to pick, you can have both, yes. which are two of my favorite cuisines. Mm -hmm. So we actually started with the Greek meze. Yes. Mm -hmm. And I was like, we could have just had that and just been like, all right, this place is amazing, we'll be back. But the warm pita, and you dip it in the tzatziki, and then there's the Greek cheese with the caper sauce and the yes. arugula, and then they have the prawns with the pancetta. The waiter came over and he's like, wow, you guys really went for it. Cause we, like, we were like scooping up like with the pita, like all this sauce, and that was such 
such a bright star on that meal. So, mm -hmm. oh, of course, I'm a wine drinker, but I've gotten so used to drinking Greek brandy mm -hmm. called Metoxa, okay. and they make the best sidecar Metoxa. That is absolutely superb. Okay, so another starter we had was grilled octopus under mashed potatoes with a salsa verde. Whoa. They added this brightness, but the octopus had this char flavor. Mm -hmm. So there was this play on ocean meets land. It was just, oh my gosh, it was so delicious. I love that dish. Okay. My wife had the scampi, which was buttery, garlicky, across the board, everything was just mm -hmm. out of the park. Mm -hmm. uh, what really impressed about the scampi was the portion sizes that you get with the shrimp with it, yes. right? Yeah. Uh, some places can really kind of skimp on the proteins. Mm -hmm. uh, the Park Street Tavern didn't do that. And the pasta is made fresh. Mm. You, you can, can tell. Yeah. I also had the wedge salad. Yeah. The, the blue cheese dressing, the bacon, hard boiled eggs, yeah. tomatoes were on the side. Mm -hmm. Just the presentation itself was just mm -hmm. textbook. Mm -hmm. And like I said earlier, the bread and butter I could have by itself, <laughs> the wedge salad as well too, you can throw that in there with it. Any room for dessert? There was room for dessert. <laughs> Unfortunately, I didn't have enough room to eat it at the restaurant. Okay. <laughs> so I had to get the it's cheesecake to go. Mm -hmm. Just yeah. delicious. Yeah, yes. do you get dessert, Paula? I do. They have a Greek yogurt mm -hmm. and they have these wonderful black cherries. Mm -hmm. There's something with those black cherries mm -hmm. over that Greek yogurt mm -hmm. that just tops it off beautifully. All right, so you obviously would go back. Oh yeah. Okay. Oh yeah. Absolutely go back, definitely. I'm gonna vote for you for mayor yeah. of the Park Street Tavern. Right. Okay, like go Paula. Next time I go, I'm mentioning Paula's name. Yeah, and I will right. be going back, so right. I'll mention, mention your name. Yep. Yes. If you would like to try the Park Street Tavern, it's located on, you guessed it, Park Street in Alameda. And the average tab per person without drinks is around fifty dollars. Oh, that is delicious. And now, reporter Cecilia Phillips gets a front row seat as local chefs face off to see who can claim the best fried chicken sandwich. It's all part of the fun at Supermarket Sundays in Newark. Welcome to Newark, California. As a kid growing up in the South Bay, we would always attend the San Jose Flea Market on Sundays. So um, my grandparents would take me, it was a fun atmosphere, a lot of shopping, a lot of food. So here in Newark, we wanted to bring back the fabric of family and community while supporting small business. Your hot Cheetos ball. And having a vibe and energy where people can come and be comfortable. So today you have a special theme that you're doing? We do, we have our fried chicken sandwich cook-off. What does the perfect fried chicken sandwich have to have? The best sauce. It has to have the correct sauce. Crispy, crunchy, succulent. And if there's some spice in there, that's gonna be the winner. The way that this sandwich is like popping out, it's like a volcano of fried chicken <laughs> emerging from its dormant slumber. So, so who's are you gonna try? <laughs> Everyone. What did you give me? So we have a chicken sandal combo today. It is a chicken sandwich on top of a half order of waffle fries. And then since you wanted the spiciest one, we got the Mega Death, which has a lot of Carolina Reaper and ghost pepper. Oh my gosh, look at how red it is. Here we go. Oh no. Oh no, no, no. What is it called? Okay, this is called the Asian Cajun right here. This has slaw, pickles, my bomb sauce, like a homemade honey sweet sauce. And I also give it a side of garlic ranch and a side of bomb sauce as well. So you can pick and choose what sauce you want to do, you know? That's the spiciest thing I've ever eaten in my life. Ooh! Eight yeah. chickens all day. All right, so we have like a freshly made potato bun that was made today. Uh, we have our house mezcla aioli. We have a green papaya and green apple slaw with a tamarind vinaigrette. That's it, that's all I need. Something different, something special. Ooh, my eyes are watering. That's real good. Bay Area, make some noise. One more time, show your love for our contestants for our chicken. Everybody, come on up to the judges' table. I'm ready for the cut, ready for the cut. Let's go. So can we have the results, please? The first place, let's go. Every day we come to make a pellet happen. That's all day. Let's go. 
I have to thank my fabulous guests on this week's show, Lindsay Ulrey, who swears by the burgers at Debauchery in Livermore, Kevin Garcia, whose simple pleasure is a crusty, cheesy pie from Toto's Pizzeria in San Bruno, and Paula Johnson, lover of the garlicky shrimp scampi at the Park Street Tavern in Alameda. Join us next time when three more guests will recommend their favorite spots right here on Check Please Bay Area. I'm Leslie Sabraco, and I'll see you then. Cheers, everyone. Cheers. 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 Check Please Bay Area is made possible by the members of KQED and by... It's our food rescue program that feeds people, not landfills. It's a thousand things, big and small. Sutter Health. Total Wine & More offering delivery and curbside pickup options with over 8,000 wines, 2,500 beers, and 4,500 spirits. Customers can shop in-store, online, or on our app. Fog Harbor Fish House is a local family-owned restaurant offering sweeping views of the San Francisco Bay. Fog Harbor serves fresh, 100% sustainable seafood featuring specialties including roasted shellfish platters, chipino, and oysters. Located at Pier 39 in San Francisco, reserve at fogharbor.com. The Bay Area Airport that's close and reliable. iFlyOAK.com Cooking is the first kind of love you know. It was started when I was a child with my grandmother doing fresh pasta and now I transmit it to all the guests. It's something made specially for them. Oceana Cruises, proud sponsor of Check Please Bay Area. This is Mama's Papas. I specialize in Latin Hawaiian fusion. Right here we have our hot Cheetos uh, mac and cheese ball. <laughs> <laughs> so my business is Kimoy Chamoy. What we currently sell is Mexican slash Korean chamoy. Watermelon. Mm. So what is this? It's a freeze-dried Skittle. Same thing the military does with the MREs. It's no longer gummy no more. Now it's a crunchy. Wow. 